Let's take a quick walk through the brand new Steinberg Mix console. One of the problems with many software mixers is often they're set to kind of fixed sizes. So depending on your screen resolution, you may not be able to see everything that you need to. The Steinberg Mix console is completely scalable, so whether you're running a smaller laptop resolution or full HD resolution, you can take advantage of every pixel uh, on your screen for the mixer. Zooming is also very easy. We could use our standard Cubase G and H shortcut keys. We also have an important setting right up here in the upper left hand corner, which is the setup window. This will allow you to pick what components are visible in the mixer. So if I don't want to see my channel overview, or if I wanted to see the control room, I could activate different portions of the mixer from there. We have three areas that could retain focus in the mixer, and this is something to be aware of. And you'll see what the area of focus will have a little white outline. Right now it's on the channel selector, but if I wanted to go back and forth, I could have it on the channel selector, hit my tab key to go to my racks, hit the tab key one more time to go to the faders, and then shift plus tab to go the opposite direction. We also have our toolbars going across the top. By default, your toolbars will look like this, but there are some other really nifty settings in your toolbars, and we could right click to customize, and I want to show all of the toolbars. So if I have zooming capabilities right here, so if I wanted to zoom in and out, I could do that. If I wanted to change the order of how the toolbars appear, right click again and go to customize toolbar, and then go to setup. If I wanted to move the transport to the right or to the left, and then if I wanted to save my configurations, I can come right here and click on presets and store it. Our channel selector gives us some very nifty things. The first thing we'll see is our visibility tab. As I click here, I can pick and choose exactly which channels I do or don't want to see in the mixer. If I didn't want to see the scratch vocals, I can hide that channel. If I have all of my guitars in a group or a folder rather, I can click right here and hide an entire folder. Now folders are always very convenient in Cubase for organizing your projects. So if I wanted to take a number of tracks here, I can now right click from my channel selector and move selected tracks to new folder. And now if I wanted to hide all of the drums, I could click right there and hide the drums that easily. Our second tab in the channel selector is for zones. So we'll see a left and a right circle. If I wanted my master fader to always be on the right hand side to be anchored on the right hand side of the mixer, I could click directly there and we'll see this red fader. That's our master fader. And if I want the lead vocals to always be anchored on the left side of the mixer. So now as I navigate in the mixer, you'll see that my lead vocals is fixed to the left and my master fader fixed to the right hand side. Now navigation has also been improved. So if I wanted to look at my channel navigation here, I'll have my channel overview at the top of the screen. So if I wanted to just kind of scroll through all my channels, selecting all the channels is also improved as well. I can select my channels here from my channel selector. If I have all of my channels if my focus is on the faders, I can hold down the shift key and just with my right arrow key on my computer keyboard, I could select my channels that easily as well. Below the channel overview, we'll have our meters. So as we're playing our project, we can see our meters here in the overview as well as the channels. Now right clicking on the meters themselves, we can have different peak options, whether it's held forever or just held temporarily, as well as the meter position, whether it's on input, post fader, or post panner. If you wanted to customize how the meters look and with the colors, we can go to your preferences 
and under metering you could actually have the appearance and you could change the colors of the meters to exactly what you want. Below the meters we're going to have our channel EQ. Clicking on that I can see my bass track here. Now we see a spectrum analysis of exact frequencies that are going on and as I apply the EQ we can see the change harmonically going on between the original EQ signal as well as the affected EQ right there. Now channel linking has been significantly improved as well. We're going to have two different types of channel links. We'll have a quick link which is temporary as well as a fixed link. If I wanted to select multiple channels here I could say let's grab all of my drums and now if I wanted to quick link these without having to assign these forever I can just link those very quickly and disengage my quick link and now they'll all move independently. I could also hold down my shift plus alt or option key and that will engage my quick link and while I hold that key combination down again shift plus alt or option they'll be linked and as soon as I release then I could have I can have the channels unlinked. So very, very handy for that. Now once multiple channels are selected, I can also right click and if I wanted to create a new bus from the selected channels, what I could do is add a group channel from the selected channels and I'm gonna call this drum bus two. Let's say if we wanna do parallel compression and now I'll select add track and now all those channels will now be routed to our new bus that easily. Selecting our drums again, if I wanted to apply a fixed link, what I could do now is actually click on the link button. Once I do that, I'll have channel link options. So I could have multiple linked groups. And now if I wanted to have my pan linked in addition to volume, sends, or routing, or not have my pan but my EQ, you could choose what elements are linked together. So now as soon as I come right over here, these will be in a fixed link. To override the link temporarily to make a quick adjustment, just hold down your Alter Option key and now that will restore the link. So very, very easy, very handy. If I wanted to jump to another link group, I could click right here and each link group could have independent linked values. So I could go to my background, vocals, some additional background vocals, as well as to my drum group, just like that. We also have a search function because in large projects like this, it could be often problematic finding particular tracks. So while you're playing, if you wanted to search for a particular track, you could click on the magnifying glass. And if you wanted to find, oh, the guitar solo came in, it's way too loud, you could just type in solo and then that would automatically take you to that particular channel. So your search function here will filter out all the choices not based on the letters that you type in. So if looking for bass, check right there and it's automatically gonna select the bass channel for you. We'll also have different channel types. So if I wanted to see all of my input channels or if I wanted to see let's say all of my MIDI channels or didn't want to see group channels, clicking your channel types will allow you to filter different types of channels from your mixer view. Something else incredibly powerful is the visibility agents. So let's say we're playing our song and I only want to see what tracks are playing at that moment in time. I could go to my visibility agent and say show all channels they're playing at the cursor position. And now it'll filter all the channels that weren't playing. So if I want to jump to maybe a little earlier in the song. Again, go to my visibility agent, show channels at the cursor position. Or if I only want to see channels between the locators, or if I want to see channels uh, that only have channel data, 
if I have selected channels here, I could also choose to show only selected channels or to hide selected channels or to show all of the channels. So very, very powerful ways of kind of surgically filtering out tracks that you don't need to see. Also across the top, we'll have our global bypass for automation, read, write, but also the ability to bypass all the sends, the channel strip, your inserts and EQs. So if you're exporting and you don't want to apply all the processing, you can in one fell swoop bypass all those different functions. Track documentation is getting to be more and more of a problem. So if I wanted to come here, we could actually open up a notepad and picture icon. So if I wanted to come to the base, I could actually type in notes. I could say this was a uh, Ampeg amp. And we'll say uh, RE20 mic. And now I could keep documentation of the session. So I could come right over here, type in any session notes, what instruments were used, or this is the vocal to use, this is a scratch vocal, and this will make your life much easier, and especially if you pass it on to other engineers. In addition to that, we can have pictures. So if I wanted to come to my snare track, kind of different pictures from the library here, but also what's very cool is user pictures. So I could say this is how our snare drum was mic'd. Or for my bass track, I wanted to come here and actually take a look. And I could take a picture with your phone or with your camera and say this is what the bass looked like. And this is what the guitar part looked like. This is how the guitar amp was mic'd, the settings on the amp or the effects. And that could be stored directly within the project so as you can see, a tremendous amount of flexibility with this brand new Steinberg Mix Console. In the second tutorial, we'll take a more in-depth view of the channel racks.